the powers in the blood. 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 through 8, the King James text today reads, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Amen. The power today is in the blood. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment. Father, we love you so very much. God, today I love the word of the Lord. I've had a love affair with the word of God since I was a child. And I'm grateful, Lord. For the direction, the guidance, the wisdom that it offers us as we navigate ourselves through this difficult life and this difficult world. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is what causes us to walk victoriously through this life. Faith, God, according to your word, is what allows us to overcome the struggles, the troubles, the trials of this world. Master, in the name of Jesus, your messenger, your servant today, God, requires the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I understand today, God, that the only way I can possibly benefit the people of God is if the Holy Ghost anoints the words that I speak. Lord, if you empower those words and if you cause those words, Lord, to be able to not only enter into the hearing, but to find their way to the heart of every hearer. Lord, if you allow those words by your Spirit to latch on to our heart, and to engrave themselves upon the tablet of our heart, so that we might not be forgetful hearers, but doers of the word as well. Master, today the messenger requires the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The hearer requires the anointing. Oh God, we need you to till up, to tear up that fallow ground, that ground that is hard today that ground which has been hardened by circumstances and situations, by depression, by sickness, disease, struggles, troubles, anxiety. Tear up, O oh God, that hardened ground that it might be prepared to receive the Word of God. For in the Word of God there is hope, in the Word of God there is healing, in the Word of God there is salvation. Master, send forth your word even as it goes forth. Let it heal, let it deliver, let it save. For we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Jesus came into our world, the Apostle John said, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit bears witness of this to us because 
The Spirit is truth. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And the most important phrase in that verse today is this, And these three are one. And then John gives us an earthly model, which helps to demonstrate how those three are one, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. He then gives us a model to help illustrate to us how it is that these three things can be one. He said there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And by the way, the, the uh, Greek, these three are one, these three agree in one. These two phrases literally are translated identically. So they both mean the same identical thing. That these three are in agreement, they are joined. They are in union one with the other. He says today, water, spirit, and blood, and these three agree in one. The source of the water is our mother. The water is what protects us in her womb and is what surrounds us as we go through the gestation period, as we go through, uh, as mom goes through her pregnancy with us. We are surrounded and protected by water before the child can be born. That water must first break, amen. That water must first emerge from her so that the child can be born. The blood is the byproduct of a union between the father and the mother. I myself have mistakenly said in years past uh, that the blood, because you know it always was said that the father determined the blood type. Well in reality I've learned, science has taught us, that blood is actually like any other part of our being. It is determined by uh, genes from both the mother and the father. And so it is a union of the mother and father. So we have the mother's contribution, we have the contribution of the mother and the father joined together, and then we have the contribution of spirit. And we know who is the father of spirits, amen? That is God. So God is the source of the Spirit. But it was imperative that Jesus Christ be born of water and blood and of the Spirit. It was important that He be born a natural uh, birth, that He go through a natural birth process and He come into the world by reason of a natural birth. I want to read to you today John chapter 19 verses 31 through 34. The Word of God declares, this is at the uh, crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ and He has been offered vinegar on the cross as he cried out, I thirst. He finally has come to the place where he succumbs to death and declares, it is finished. And he bows his head and the word of God said that at that point he gave up the ghost. And in verse 31, John 19, the word of God declares, the Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. 
but one of the soldiers with a, with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Hallelujah. Water alone today, my friend, cannot cleanse. Water alone can only rinse. An ingredient must be introduced which is able to separate the dirt from our flesh. Just as pouring rain does not wash our cars, but rather it only rinses them. Even so, a car wash, you wonder why I have this picture for this message today. Even so, a car wash must include soaps or detergents if it is to accomplish the task of cleaning our vehicles. The water then serves simply to rinse away both the detergent and the dirt. Tommy and I uh, recently went through a car wash. I can't remember how recently, but at some point, we, I love car washes. I find them very relaxing. For a few moments, I'm transported out of this world as the brushes and the water and all this soap is poured out on the vehicle. And I, I'm crazy. I love car washes. I like to go through them. But you know, when you go through a car wash, you can spray that car with water all you want to. And if you've ever gone through a, a car wash that was broken, and when it comes time for the soap, to be dispensed or the detergent to be dispensed onto the vehicle. It's not working and no detergent comes out. Well, if you've ever been through a car wash that wasn't working just right, you know that when you get on the other end of that car wash and you step out of your car and you look at it to see how clean it got, it didn't get very clean at all, did it? No. Because water alone cannot clean. Water alone can only rinse. You need something that chemically, you need something in terms of offering an abrasiveness, something that can separate the filth and the dirt from whatever it is you're washing, whether it be the metal of a, uh, the paint on a car, whether it be your skin, you need something that is able to offer some form of abrasion or some form of detergent that is able to separate the dirt and separate the grime and separate the oil and separate the filth from the surface. And then once you've used the detergent, then you're able to rinse. Hallelujah. And when you rinse, it rinses away not only the detergent, not only the abrasiveness, but it also rinses away the dirt. Amen. That was raised up away from the surface. I'm here to tell you today, the power of God unto salvation is not in the water. Sometimes we apostolics uh, get so caught up in preaching the message of Jesus' name, baptism. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm about to say. I am under no circumstances saying today, Jesus' name, baptism is not important and or essential to your walk with God and to your salvation. I believe according to the Word of God it is. So by no means am I trying to make light of it today. But sometimes we preach as if the power is in the water, but the power's not in the water. The power's in the blood. Hallelujah. And the blood is applied to our life through faith and confidence in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. It is the blood that separates us from our filth. <laughs> it is the blood that separates us from our dirt. It is the blood that separates us from that which would otherwise cause us to appear before God filthy and sinful and repulsive. Hallelujah. It's the blood that does the cleansing. 
But there's a reason that God asks us to go through the waters of baptism. There's a reason why God asks us to go into those waters and to be rinsed. Not just rinsed, not just physically rinsed, but to apply the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the act and in the ordinance of baptism. There is a reason why. Listen to what Ananias said to Paul after his conversion. He was still known at that time as Saul. And Ananias comes into Saul, and in verse 16, Acts 22, he declares to Saul, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, listen, and wash away thy sins, hallelujah, calling on the name of the Lord, hallelujah. The reason that we follow up our faith in Jesus Christ with baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is because by faith through repentance and obedience to the gospel, the blood is applied. Hallelujah. It's time to rinse. Glory to God. Wash away thy sins calling upon the name of the Lord. Glory. The detergent has done its work. But now we got to get that dirt off of you. You don't want a mess on you. You don't want... Well, you ever seen a car when it's got all that detergent on it and stuff? Not only do you have the soap there, but the dirt's still there. Amen. God says, I, I didn't go to the cross so that you could come out soapy. I didn't come out... <laughs> I didn't go to the cross so that you could walk through life with detergent and bubbles all over you. I went to the cross so that in my sight you could be clean and sanctified and perfect. Hallelujah. That's why the Word of God declares that the way to God, according to Peter in the second chapter of the book of Acts, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what purpose? For the remission of sins. Hallelujah. You gotta have that, you gotta have those sins washed off. You gotta have that sin removed. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. It's a rinsing. It's a cleansing. Hallelujah. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Water alone cannot cleanse. It can only rinse. But the power of God unto salvation is found in the blood. In Hebrews chapter 9 verses 16 through 22. For where a testament is... There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. You see, a testament is in effect a will. The Apostle Paul said in Hebrews 9, where there is a will, there must be a death. In order for that will to be carried out, then the one who has written the will, oh, hallelujah, I hope you're hearing me today, children. The one who's written the will, whoo, has to die. So I can't write a will for Tommy. I can't say what, um, upon my death, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take all his property and do this and take all his stuff and do that. I can't write a will for those of you who are watching today. Aren't you glad for that? I cannot force my will and my desires upon your heirs and upon those that you love. No, you are the one who is able to write a will concerning your goods and your property. But in order for that will to be carried out, then the person who wrote the will, in Scripture referred to as a testament, has to die. 
For a testament, a testament is of force, verse 17, Hebrews 9, after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats, listen, with water, and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood... There is no remission. Why? Because the power's in the blood. Not water. Water doesn't do the trick. Water is available abundantly. You can find water virtually anywhere, almost anywhere, even in a desert. If you dig deep enough, oftentimes you'll find water. But the power is not in the water. Hallelujah. It's in the soap. It's in the detergent. It's in the blood. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, the Apostle John writes and says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, listen, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. John is writing to the church. John is speaking of the church. He is not talking to the world. He is saying to the church that after we have believed and obeyed the gospel, the blood of Jesus Christ still has power. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ still has the ability to cleanse. How do we access the blood once we have believed, once we've repented, uh, been baptized in the name of the Lord, received the Holy Ghost? What, what then is necessary? Do we have to go through the whole process all over again? He said, no. As a child of God, in order to access the blood, all we have to do is confess our sin. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Some people don't understand why saints, believers, children of God go to church. Why it's so important to listen to the preached Word of God. Well, the Word of God tells us that 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But the, but the scriptures also tell us that the word of God serves the purpose. Paul said, by the washing of water, by the word. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know every time you come to church, now right now you can't come, but every time you sit and listen to the preacher and you hear the word of God, that word of God is washing over you. Every sin you confessed, everything you told God, everything you spoke to the Lord about, everything that you did or said or thought that was out of place and you said, oh God, forgive me, I confess my sin. Lord, according to the promise of your word, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The blood is applied. Oh, but we still need a rinse. Hallelujah. So God says, that's all right. That's why the word of God said, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the custom of some. But even more as you see the day approaching. Why? Paul, uh, the word of God is telling us that you're going to need that rinse. Hallelujah. You're going to need it. You see, our spiritual experience is about more than just calling. I remember as a kid, there was a phrase that was popular in the church back in the day. People would say, oh, I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Christ. I plead the blood. And well, it's all well and good to apply the blood and to put the blood to work because the power's in the blood. But there is a rinsing that occurs. There is something that causes the effects of the blood to then be rinsed away from us. And what is that? It's the word of God washing over our souls. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you this old preacher. I've always loved the Word of God. I've always loved preaching. I, I, I could honestly, I'm not kidding you, I could be in church every day of the week, all day, and love every minute of it. I love camp meetings. I love conferences. I love when we have our big meetings, you know, and we're in church two or three or four times a day. I love for the Word of God to wash over me because every time I walk away from the preached Word of God, I feel cleansed. Don't you? I feel refreshed. Hallelujah. I feel renewed. I feel restored. I've been through the car wash. Was the power in the water? No. The power's in the blood. Amen. Oh, but I still need to rinse. Glory to God. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 20, the Word of God declares, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the, the image of the invisible God, speaking of Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Listen, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, 
by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Now I want to read also to you 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. Listen. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, 2 Corinthians 5. To wit, in other words, to this end, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I've been telling you this afternoon that the power's in the blood. And you might wonder today, well, Pastor, just how does that work? It's easy. You remember our primary text today where John told us that he came by water, but not by water only, but by blood? See, Daddy doesn't have to contribute to the water. But Daddy has to contribute to the blood. The Word of God tells us that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. When God caused that child to be formed in Mary's womb, when that embryo began its existence, in Mary's womb and the blood began to form there was literally a joining a union listen to me children of humanity with divinity the word of God tells us what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh condemned sin in the flesh. Oh, I want to tell you, Jesus Christ came in the form of sinful flesh. He came in the form of fallen man. But within his veins, something flowed. Oh, my God. I hope you're listening to me now, children. <laughs> Ooh, glory. In his veins, something flowed, which had both Humanity and divinity. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Oh, hallelujah. Guess what that means? That means that the divinity mm, overcame everything that was human. <laughs> in Him is no darkness at all. That blood, there's an old song we sing, for His blood was precious blood. For it bore the sins of man. His blood had healed my body and it set my spirit free. His blood was unique. Because his blood was of a union of divine origin and earthly origin. And nothing of an earthly nature can stand in the face of the divine. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> oh, all of a sudden we understand why was it important? You see, God could have just had any old man impregnate Mary. And Mary could have had any man's baby. And he could have elevated any man to be the Messiah. But no, that wasn't going to work. Because the power is in the blood. So therefore, for this thing to work, then the blood has got to contain divinity. Paul the Apostle told Timothy, his young apprentice, as it were, for without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He took on the fallen nature of man. But then he said, but he was justified, meaning 
he was perfect. Where? In the Spirit. What did the Apostle John tell us were the three ingredients that are a testimony to the nature of God? He said there are three things that bear record in earth, the Spirit and the Word and the blood. In a human being, our spirit is God's creation. In the human being, the water is God's creation. In the human being, the spirit is God's creation. In the Son of the living God, oh, hallelujah, Mom contributed the water, but Mom and Dad in union created and contributed the blood. But listen to me, children. But God alone <laughs> provided the Spirit. Hallelujah. There was no Spirit in Christ but the Spirit of Almighty God. To wit, God, whom the Word of God declares is a Spirit, was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. So Christ did not go to the cross to reconcile the world to somebody else. No, 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 no. God was in Christ. The Spirit of God was in Christ so that he might reconcile the world unto himself. He had to be God. He could be nothing less than God because the blood is where the power is. You see, the First Testament, the Old Testament, required the blood of sheep and of goats. When God called Abraham to offer his son Isaac in sacrifice upon the altar, you remember they got to the place and they began to carry the accoutrements up the mountainside to offer an offering. And Isaac looks at his dad and said, Dad, we've got everything for a sacrifice, but what we don't have is the sacrifice. Where is that animal which we're going to offer in sacrifice? And what did Abraham answer? Abraham answered, son, he didn't say, son, God's asked me to offer you. He didn't say that. He said, son, I know God. <laughs> I know God so well. I know when he asked me to do something that he really don't expect me to do, but he wants to see if I'm willing or not. He said, I'm here to tell you, child, God will provide. Listen to the way Abraham said it. He said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. God provided himself as a sacrifice. Do you know what every sheep and every goat and every uh, uh, dove that was offered, every oxen that was offered to God in sacrifice over the centuries in the Jewish faith, do you know what those animals represented? They represented God. They represented God himself being sacrificed. That's why Jesus, the uh, John the Baptist declared as Jesus approached the banks of the Jordan River, Behold the Lamb of God! Hallelujah! You know how that can be translated? Behold God the Lamb! Hallelujah! The Lamb that Abraham spoke of! that God himself would be, behold him, hallelujah. In his blood is divinity, in his blood is the power of divinity, and nothing can, can chase away sin, nothing can chase away fear, nothing can chase away trouble like God. Nothing can cause sin to flee like the divine. Hallelujah. When you introduce the divine, the divinity of Almighty God to that bloodstream, honey, there is nothing unclean, there is nothing unpure. We don't read in the Bible one place where Jesus ever fell sick.
We don't read in the Bible one single place where the Lord ever was ill or where He ever was not feeling well, do we? My goodness, within His blood was humanity. Within His blood was divinity. But within His Spirit, there was but one Spirit that dwelt within Him. This is why Jesus declared, I can't do anything except the Father show me. I can't do anything except the Father speak to me and tell me why. Because God was in Christ. The Spirit of God was in that man Christ. You and I have our own spirit. We have to wrestle between our spirit and our flesh. Our spirit often knows the right thing to do, the right way to go, the right way to walk or talk or act. But our flesh wants to do something different. Imagine if you had no spirit of your own, but the only spirit within your body were God. Oh my goodness. Talk about a battle. No wonder Satan came to the Lord for 40 days in the wilderness and tempted him. Because there was a battle being waged. The word of God said, Tempted in all like manner as we get without sin. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 1, trying to wind this up today. Verses 12 through 20, the word of God said, Giving thanks unto the Father. I'm sorry, I've already read that to you. Let's go down. Oh, I've already done that too. Amen. Well, praise God. The power's in the Word. I guess I've come to a close, folks. Y'all can be happy. I've said everything I need to say. Amen. The power's in the blood. Glory to God. Today, if you need salvation, if you need to secure your place in eternity, if you need to secure your place in heaven, with God, it's a simple thing to do. You need to access the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the only avenue. There are not a number of, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I can't go the route of the universalist. I cannot go the route of uh, those who embrace what I refer to as hyper-liberalism. You know, all roads do not lead to Rome. That saying is a false saying. Anybody who knows anything in the universe knows that all roads, in fact, do not lead to Rome. That was hyperbole even in its day. The truth of the matter is, Jesus Christ has declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In 1 John 5, today our primary text for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Listen. But he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. Do you believe today that Jesus Christ was a product, the man Jesus Christ was the product of humanity joined to divinity so that the blood could have the power to set you free. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads this afternoon.